So what if you had the opportunity to learn why and how eight successful traders from a professional trading desk in New York were consistently winning? And what if you had an opportunity to see some of the setups that those traders use? What I hear often from independent traders and from retail traders and from developing traders and semi-pro traders is that they don't know who to follow. They don't know if they should have confidence in learning what some particular people are teaching. Well, in this case, we're gonna try and help you out with that. And we're gonna try and help you out with that by showing you eight successful traders from our desk in New York City, our proprietary trading desk in New York City, how and why they consistently win and break down for you what goes into that. We'll have some fun with a template that goes into how you can become a consistently profitable trader and better. We, we say a path to being a million dollar trader. And hopefully this is a little bit more reassuring uh, to you guys because, and, and sort of to take a half a step back, I am the co-founder of SMB Capital. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading desk in New York City. And what that means is that we back, we fully back, we fully fund all of our traders in New York. The only way that our firm can make money is if our traders are consistently profitable. We split trading profits with our traders. We train them from the beginning, we hire them, uh, we spend years developing them with our training, um, we get them to the point where they're consistently profitable and, and better and better. And we've had quite a bit of success since we started in 2005. So we've been doing this through lots of different markets We've had people reach extraordinary levels of success, seven figure traders and better. And you know, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm also the author of two books, uh, One Good Trade and The Playbook. And so what I hope to do today is to share with you guys, hey, here are people that are succeeding. Here are people succeeding at a professional level. Here's why they're succeeding. Uh, here's what we're doing. This will this presentation will have the added benefit of offering you guys a bonus. So if you get intrigued by what we're talking about, there's a multi-hour webinar that you can go and sign up for at smbu.com slash free webinar. There's three strategies that are taught step by step, literally explicit detail of these three strategies that we're using on our desk. And then inside of that, there is an offer for SMB DNA, which is the first training program, the first part of the training that we put all of our traders that we hire here in New York through. And we are, we're offering it for you guys at a huge discount. There's a path to join our desk if you perform at a, at a pretty high level. So some of you will be super serious and be interested in that. The goals for today are to introduce successful traders from SMB to you, share trading lessons from them, show you some of their strategies. We're gonna have some fun and reveal the million dollar trader trading formula. I'll take some questions that Daniel submitted to me prior to this webinar. I'll answer some of them. And look, at, at, if at any point you have questions that you want to ask, go ahead and ask them. I'm happy to be cut off. You will not be, I will not think you're being rude. Um, just go ahead and, and, and fire away. So this is Swang. This is one of our top traders and he's holding up a black shirt. And on our desk, if you make $1 million net in trading P&L, that's net. That's not gross. That means after all the fees, if you make $1 million net in a particular year, you get a green shirt. And this is a huge honor to have started as somebody who's new 
come through the doors not knowing anything and get to the point where you're putting up $1 million net and trading profits. That, that is a huge accomplishment. Well, Swang, as you can see here, he earned a black shirt. A black shirt is for traders that earn $2 million plus net in trading P&L for the year. And I wanna use him to teach an important point. So Daniel and I had some communique via email, and I think I have a pretty good understanding of what a large swath of the population listening to this is most interested in. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna address that in these prepared remarks. And I'm gonna address that firstly by giving you some ideas about what you wanna be interested at towards the start. And while you know Swang is a black shirt trader, he first started off as somebody who broke even. And I think about uh, trading in a particular path. First, you're gonna to lose too much. Then you're gonna lose less. That's a lot of progress. Then you're gonna break even. That's a lot of progress. It's not a lot of traders who can even get to that point. Then you're gonna make a little bit consistently. That's a tremendous amount of progress. Then you're gonna make more from what you do well. You're gonna build on your consistency. Then you're gonna work on your sizing to really put some money to risk on your best trades. And then you're gonna learn how to be more sophisticated in expression of your edge. And then you're gonna work on expanding your playbook. Th those are natural paths that we see for our traders here. So from interview to green shirt trader, black shirt trader, I'm thinking about that. When I'm, when I'm interviewing you for my prop firm, I'm thinking about can you get through all those stages and, and do you have the characteristics to be able to do that? And I do wanna sort of take a step back right now and explain uh, one thing, which is, so SME Capital owns two distinct businesses. Our primary business is a proprietary trading desk in New York. We're funding traders, we're hiring traders, uh, we're paying traders to get through the learning curve. We're fully funding them. They're able to trade equities and options and futures. We have automated trading software. And that is what I spend 85% of my time on. How do I get our traders to make more P&L? And 15% of our time and another very distinct and separate business is SMBU or SMB training. It is an education company. It's a for-profit education company. So you, if you're not a part of this firm, you can take all of the education that we offer to our prop traders in New York through SMBU or SMB training. And you can get that same experience that our prop traders went through. And so the point about Swang that I really wanna make is when he first started, he was making, well, he wasn't making anything actually, but when he first started to get consistent, he was making four to $8,000 a month. Four to $8,000 a month, and for an extended period of time. And then what we did with him is we got him to identify his strengths. He was a really great scalper. He was a really great micro scalper, very quick thinker. And we got him to do more of what he did well. And we got him to trade what he was doing bigger. And we slowly worked on this. So we would ask him to push himself on a daily basis, a little bit outside of his comfort zone, but not too much. Trade a little bit bigger, but not too much. And get used to trading bigger size trading a, a little bit bigger size, trading a little bit bigger size, trading a little bit bigger size. It's, it's like somebody who goes to the gym and wants to improve their bench press. One of my guys here, who's a little guy, 
he wants to bench 225 by the end of the year. Uh, he is a little guy. And when he goes to work on his bench, you know, first you want to start at 135 and see if you can do that. And then you don't want to go from 135 all the way up to 225. You put on a little bit more weight and you get used to that and you get used to lifting more. And then you put on a little bit more weight. You get used to being able to do that, put on a little bit more weight. Same thing with sizing. But there, I'm sure, are people out there that have certain trades for which they're very consistent. And you don't even have to be overall consistent. You just have to have certain trades for which you're consistent. On our desk, we ask our guys to tag and to measure all of their setups. Give them a name, measure them. We use something called TraderView.com. It keeps statistics of how you're doing in each one of these trades. You might be negative $5,000 for the month, but inside of that month, you might be positive $3,000 on a second day play, something we call a second day play. Well, that's a lot of information and that's something that we can build from. And so Swang is this four to $8,000 a month trader, keeps working at it, keeps working at it, keeps working at it. Those four to $8,000 months turn into $116,000 months negative one day on this particular month. They turn into $180,000 months, negative two days out of the month. And then let's fast forward, this is 2016, let's, let's fast forward ahead in 2017 and those days turn into $586,000 for the month. Negative two days. And one of those days he was negative 500 bucks. He's continuing his consistency. Same year, $626,000 in a particular month. I get really apprehensive about sharing p &L. I do it because I know it gets people to listen. Um, I do it because I think it should inspire you to find what you do consistently because he was somebody who was doing something well at, a, at, at very little numbers but he, he really built from them. And then, you know, of course, in, in 2000, just this last month was his best month ever. And in the same month, he put up almost $1.2 million doing what he, do, doing what he does best. This $4,000 a week, I'm sorry, this $4,000 a month trader ends up putting up about $1.2 million in a particular month. Trade your niche that highlights your talents. And so in communicating with Daniel, uh, I have a little bit of background as to what some of you have, have gone through. And you know, one of the things that we try and do here is help people build skills to help people to think through trades as a professional, to help people have a foundation to review and prepare like a professional, to help people to be able to help people get exposed to enough different types of ways to trade with edge that they can copy and then try and make their own and then go ahead and forge their individual path as a trader, as opposed to having 30 people all learn the same thing. My experience has been that we teach people when they come in here the same way. People take uh, SMB DNA to start, and we, and we keep going. But from there, the, the training helps traders become unique traders. And so Swang found his unique path. Now, that path should mesh with your talents. So there's gonna be some people 
who can trade a certain way and some people who can trade another way and some people who can trade another way. And there's a lot of different ways to attack, attack markets. And so people ask, well, how do I, how do I know? How do I know what kind of a trader that I can be? How do I know what my talents are? And generally what you want to do is think about what you, how you've been successful in the past. What are the ways you've been successful at the past? And work to apply that to trading. So uh, for myself, uh, I tend to be very diligent. I like to prepare a lot. I like to review a lot. I like for things to make sense. Um, I like to uh, sit in positions a little bit longer than some other people. And, you know, that's, that's my temperament and that's my personality. I, I, I like to be, in, I like to be in control of things a little bit. And so me choosing certain types of ways to trade is not going to be beneficial. Me trading other types of trades is, is really going to work. And so that's what Swang does. And, and to give you a story, Swang's a really great scalper. He's a really great micro scalper. We wanted to trade a certain type of product that our platform didn't have access to at a particular point. So we have our own proprietary trading platform. Everything comes through that. You can't trade on it unless you're at the firm. We wanted to trade something outside of that, a new offering. We thought guys would be able to make more money. We went to this other tier one firm and we agreed to trade this product on their platform. We agreed to use their orders. We let them see all of our orders and uh, do all of our business through them. And this tier one firm did 80% of all the volume in this particular product in the marketplace. And we set it up, we start trading. Soon after we start trading, the head trader from this other firm calls our firm up and says, who is this guy Swang? He's trading too fast, we can't keep up with him. And we were a little bit and befuddled like what do you mean he's too fast he was entering manual orders he wasn't putting in automated strategies i'm not what do you mean he's too fast you guys have 80 percent of the volume you see his orders we're trading on your platform we're using your routes what do you mean he's too fast they said if you got to slow him down if he doesn't slow down we're going to kick him off the platform we're going to kick you guys off the platform and so I had a talk with Swang, it's a strange talk. And I said, you gotta slow down. Don't put in, don't be so fast. They're getting a little upset. He said, fine, I will. Very polite trader, slows down. Short time after that, head trader calls the firm up again, cussing, screaming, just furious at us. This Swang guy's killing us. We're gonna pull the deal. We told you guys to slow down. We, you know, we, we can't keep up and they ended up kicking us off the platform and they kicked us off the platform because he's just too fast for other manual traders. And so the point of that is he has some talent because he can process information really, really quickly. And it would be nonsensical for him to try and be a value long-term trader, given his skill set, given his talent. We wouldn't tell him to trade longer term positions. That would make no sense. And what we do is say, double down on what your strengths are, and this is what's working. So the takeaways from Swang are find a niche with edge. And here at our desk, we teach people different edges for the type of trading that we do that uh, fit with different personalities and different skill sets and different talents. Trade a niche with edge that works for you. Prove it with trading stats live. Trade a niche that highlights your talents. Consistently and with a process, push yourself to trade bigger from what you're doing well. And I wanna make one more point about niche. So our top trader, his nickname is Shark. He runs a team 
on his team are junior traders. The traders come in, they learn from, from SMB, and then they interview and sit on a desk that is run by a senior trader. And Shark, he teaches them all of the strategies. They prepare before the open together with Shark and the junior traders on Shark's team. They can see his positions in real time. You know, and Shark is another black, he's, he's even better than that. He's, he's, a, he's a great trader. He's better than a black shirt trader. And they can see his positions. He talks to them in real time about his trades. They trade the same stocks. People on, people on his team trade the same stocks. People on his team, they even trade the same direction. But, 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 but they all trade differently. They all must trade differently because they can't handle the drawdown that shark can. They don't process information the way that shark does. They process it in their own unique way. So they tweak what shark is doing to make it work best for them. So some guys are scalping his ideas. Some guys are modifying, they're scalping and swinging. Some guys are using options to express the idea, Shark will hold things for a longer period of time. So there's different ways, and and uh, and and that's that's important. They must all trade differently. They copy the master, Shark, but then they make the trades their own. So let's say that Shark is thinking of ten different things, ten different variables that will go into a trade. Those traders are all aware of those. 10 different variables. And when they see it, they'll take a trade like Shark has taught them, but the way they execute the trade is going to be independent. It's going to be individual. It's not completely different, but it but it's unique. And, and we find that to be important here. So look, from the questions that I saw from Daniel, I, I do feel like Inherit in the questions was this huge topic, this huge theme of what are my chances of success if I were to train with SMB or train with somebody else? We can we can substitute SMB with somebody else. I feel like that is an underlying question that you all have. And you know, SMB DNA is something. It's a training that we give all of our prop traders. Will it work for you? Well, the question is, do you have the talent? to be a good trader. I got a question from somebody the other day and he was studying with somebody else and had been working on a particular strategy for two years. And, you know, said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm at my ends here. What do you, what do you think? And I, you know, I asked a bunch of more detailed questions so that I could answer intelligently. And, and I said, look, either you don't have the talent to trade this particular strategy that he had learned from somebody else. Either the strategy doesn't work, either you don't have the technology to employ the strategy properly, or you don't have the talent overall to be a good trader. I'm not sure which one of it is, but, but those are the very real world possibilities. And you know, I think sometimes people come to trading thinking if they only learn and they only learn the right things, that they're definitely going to be successful. That has not been my experience. Your own talent does matter. The right product, are you trading the right product? Your, your unique talents may not fit for the product that you're trading. This particular trader uh, wanted to keep going and thought he did have the ability to be a good trader. And, and I said, look, you're, you're, I don't know a lot of people making money in the product that you're trading. I, 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 don't, I don't have that information. I, I don't see it. It may be that you need to trade a different product. There are some people that tr are trading the wrong time frame. If we took Swang and made him into a long-term value investor, he would not do well. 
if we keep him on the course that he's doing, he's going to be, you know, one of the great traders in the street. So those are, and you know, the other thing I said to the trader was, I don't think your experience was worthless. I don't think this, this two years where you really focused on price action trading, order flow trading was useless. I, it, it, you're not having success with this type of product and this type of trading with this type of technology, but that's those skills that you learned with order flow trading can be applied to another type of trading and, and trading is a journey. We've had traders that have come through and I'll talk about them. Oops, switched coaches who switched time frames, who switched the way they express their ideas and, uh, you may have to do that as well. All right, Nadal, go where the big players cannot. And so one of the strategies that we employ on the desk is we move away from places where HFTs, high frequency traders and automated traders are, and we go to places where they can't play. And one of the traders who has excelled in making the shift brings up the point that traders come in all shapes and sizes this one particular trader took our smb college training program many many years ago if you came to the firm and you brushed into him in the hallways of smb I think honestly you might say he's an elite trader. I think you'd be surprised if if you saw him and talked to him. I think you'd be surprised. He, certainly when he started he was uh, kindly self-focused, really interested in himself. And you know uh He's 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 uh, confident in his abilities. When he first started to do well, I remember talking to him in the back office, and and he said, "No one can do what I do. Nobody on the desk can do what I do." And it's turned out that he's become a true leader today on our desk. That self focus has been replaced with team focus. He is a monster of a trader. He is a monster. Last month in one particular week, he made over a million dollars. He is a monster. And, you know, if he's not the best trader on a desk right now, but he might have the most upside of anyone on the desk. Like, traders come in all shapes and sizes and he you know, when he said, no one can do what I do on the desk, he does employ a very special trading technique that very few on the desk except his junior traders employ. And we'll talk about one particular strategy that exemplifies that point. So he trades a lot of low floats. Low floats are stocks with uh, floats of small floats sometimes as little as less than 10, 10 million shares. They're stocks that have very high short interests. They're highly manipulated. Their spreads can be wide. They get highly shorted and potentials for short squeeze. If you uh, want a particular example of that, just go take a look at IGC. Today in our marketplace, this is a one dollar and fifty stock that is trading you know at some point it's trading at 1365 right now it's a dollar fifty stock it's gone up from a dollar fifty to 1365 i can't explain why it's done this other than it's just it's being manipulated and it's a heavy short squeeze so there are a subset in our marketplace of these stocks where the HFTs don't play, where stocks just go up way too much, and then they come back to where they should. And they offer tremendous trading opportunities. And they do so with not a lot of capital. 
And one of the trades that is worth adding to your playbook, and when I say playbook, the second book that I wrote is called The Playbook. The playbook is you archiving in detail the variables of setups that work for you. Every trade that you make should have a name. It should be filled with variables. One of the traders that I work with outside of SMB is a seven-figure trader from Australia, as it, as it so happens. And I was reading his daily report card last night that he sent to me. He sends me his daily report card every night, and I comment and, and work with him to, to, get, to get better than he is. I love working with him. Hardest worker I know, conscientious, and really excited to see him become a better trader. When he writes to me his daily report card, he speaks to me in a specific and detailed language. He tells me that he's making an opening drive play. He tells me that he's making an intraday trend trade. He is viewing the marketplace in very specific setups. He's not saying, I think the stock should go higher because the fundamentals are good. That's not enough. That's not enough. A lot of times we talk about thesis. I think the stock is going to go higher. Plus trading setup from your playbook, plus confirmation on the tape, plus fight for price. That and only that equals one good trade. So if this seven-figure international trader talks in such specifics with such detail about his trades and you're not at his level, well, why not copy him? Why not copy his thinking? So here's a multiple time frame support trade. Here's what it looks like. As you can see right here, the stock is holding 550 on our two-minute chart. We want multiple time frames. It's clearly holding this 550 level. On our five minute, the stock is clearly holding that 550 level. So we've got one time frame and now two. On our 10 minute, that stock is clearly holding our 550 support level. And the reason why this is significant is that this is expanding the universe of traders who see that as support. The more time frames you're using, the more traders are seeing the same thing. And I'll take it a step further. One of the things the junior guys on our desk talk a lot about in their daily report cards they share with me is looking for setups that are aligned. Stocks that on their daily charts are aligned with their intraday charts. That their best trades are coming when the daily charts and the intraday charts are aligned when there's strength on the daily chart and there's strength on the intraday chart. That is where their best trades are coming from. Holding on the 15 minute chart, multiple time frames, clearly holding the same level. Takeaways from talking about you know, one of our surprising love him he's great he's a monster just a monster um traders in the desk still getting better still getting better still getting better nowhere near a ceiling knows it talks about it the junior guys see it imagine having a mentor who you know, puts up a million dollars for a week and is not satisfied and doesn't think he's near a ceiling and thinks there's better days ahead and knows it and is working on it and is asking you to participate in that. That's a great role model. The takeaway is, is this is one trade, this multiple time frame support trade that works over and over in a strong market. Sector strength in a strong market is worth taking a look at as well. Strong intraday charts strong daily charts, that alignment, the strong intraday and the strong daily charts, that alignment is helpful. Highly shorted stocks can breed a short squeeze and they can bring certainly risk rewards that are very favorable. 
So let's talk about cool maga, how to trade more consistently. So uh, this particular trader made his breakthrough. He had edge. You could see he had trading edge, but it wasn't enough. And you know, one of the things that perhaps comes out when you uh, read my blog or, or perhaps when you read my books is that I talk a lot about how guys can make more money, but sometimes don't talk about a very specific edge. And the reason for that is the guys that I'm working with here, they all have edge. And what I'm doing is getting them to make more from their edge. And I actually think there's a lot of independent and retail traders who have edges, don't know how to find it. They don't know how to use TraderView to track their stats. They don't know how to do daily reviews to understand what their favorite setups are. They haven't put together a playbook that seeks to archive the variables that go into their best trades. They don't trade with proper risk management. Today's a perfect example. This IGC is up more than we think it ought to be. We're making a very specific trades called backside trades. We have lost on our backside trades today, but when we lose on this particular trade today, it should be a percentage of our intraday stop. So let's say that we can risk $100,000 on an intraday basis. For a backside trade, perhaps we risk 10%. So we've lost $10,000 on this particular trade. That leaves us a lot of room to make some other good trades, like in SFI uh, X or NBEV or Facebook or Tesla or Twitter. There are tremendous amount of opportunities out there. When we follow our risk management, we take our loss in one particular play and we move on. We make some money in other trades. Our bandwidth allows us to still make money. And so he has trading with edge. But we needed to get him to make more and focus more on his edge. And it turned out that he really needed to work on this process and his routine. If he got his process and his routine right, he spent the day trading in his zone, trading with his edge for most of the day. If he didn't get his process and routine right, he floundered. And so he made it an elaborate routine for him to follow on an intraday basis. And here's just a little bit of a part of it. And if he did these things, if he woke up at a certain time, if he meditated at a certain time, if he went to work at a certain time, if he prepared his best ideas at a certain, a certain time, if he focused on just having a green day, if he went to bed at a certain time, if he ate right, if he worked out, these things led to him being in the right frame of mind to trade with edge. Without it, he didn't. And so this is a daily report card he did. And so Dr. Steenbarger is our trading coach. So he works with our top traders and uh, anyone who has an issue. He is the very best trading coach in the world. And we are very fortunate that he works with our traders. And uh, he came up with an experiment that uh, perhaps you guys want to think about and relates to this idea of a daily report card. Track your statistics of your trading. Use the statistics to prioritize one specific thing to work on in your trading. Establish a plan, a specific plan, for working on this one goal in your trading. Define in advance the stats that you're gonna target for improvement to show that you're making progress. Work on this one goal with a mentor, a coach, and modify the efforts at improvement if the targeted statistics aren't improving. Once the stats are improving and the trader has made significant progress on the chosen goal, start over again and look to the stats for another thing to work on in trading. One goal, work on it intensively, come up with solutions to solve the goal, 
Grade yourself each day on the work you did to accomplish it. This trader is working on completing his routine each and every day. <coughs> there might be something else that you want to work on. In 2017, the daily report card, this exercise of working on one goal intensively, where you find solutions and grade yourself each day, was the single most important exercise for the success we had in 2017. 2017, we completely outperformed those in our space, completely outperformed them. In 2018, we're surpassing our goals, continuing to use our daily report card with our traders here so they progress. Great resource, traderfeed.blogspot.com is where Dr. Steenbarger writes regularly. So let's say you're a little bit older and you've always wanted to trade, you felt that your passion, you're afraid maybe time has passed you by. I actually had somebody visit me from Pennsylvania who uh, runs his family's uh, food distribution company and said to me, I, I feel like I've, I've missed my time slot to become a, a great trader. I gotta help my family run their business. Our family business is doing great. Trading is something I've always loved. I got two young kids at home. I don't know if I have the time. And so Seth Freudberg, who we call the chief, is somebody who offers an option and somebody who is a role model for people who think like that, who think like that. There's nobody I respect more in the trading business. He is the epitome of the power of optimism. Always seeing things on the bright side. Great book on <clears throat> that we recommend, Learned Optimism by Martin Seligman, professor at Penn. Seth actually had him as a professor, believe it or not. Seth was the CEO of a publicly traded insurance company for years and hated it. Couldn't stand dealing with all the egos. The company got sold and he transitioned into trading. He actually was a student of ours, took SMB Foundation. At the end of it said, I'm not sure I'm gonna be an equities trader, but I get your culture. I love your culture. To us, that means guys, whether they're new or black shirt traders, are trying to get better every day. What's different here is guys, no matter how much they're making, are trying to get better. They're not judging themselves on their P&L. And he said, Mike, I noticed you guys don't have an options desk yet. How would you like for us, how would you like for us to work together and build out an options desk. So many years ago, we said, sure, that, that we'd, we'd love to do that. And we've built out an options desk with Seth. Started with zero people, got up to 14 people, several years of 30 uh, plus percent uh, and better in results. Seth runs the SME Options Tribe uh, as well. You guys can, can go to that, and there's a bunch of free webinars every Tuesday to listen to that. And so the type of trading that he does doesn't entail you sitting in front of screens for 10 hours a day. You can have a job and learn income options trading. You can supplement your income. You can keep your job and work at your game and see if you can transition get good enough to transition, like some of the guys on our desk, out into being a pro trader. 
And you know, so from Seth, the lessons are you can transition midlife to pro trader. You can. And also edge plus mentoring plus niche that highlights your talents plus strategy that fits the reality of your life equals your best chance to succeed. So for some people who are a little bit more advanced in age, um, you're gonna need the strategy to fit your life. So resources, optionstribe.com. Tuesdays, there's free webinars on option strategy. Learned Optimism is a great book by Martin Seligman. The best for professionals looking to supplement your income, retired, but you want to stay active. Transitioning professionals who'd love to trade, but don't want to stare at screens for 10 hours a day. Analytical thinkers. This is Shark. This is Team Shark. They're working here. After, after hours, obviously, you can see from the background, and they're working on technology. They're meeting once a week to work on how to build technology so that they can make more money. They can find more opportunities. And they're doling out the work for their technology products. And a Shark is our best trader. He has the single best growth mindset of any trader who we've ever trained. The first time I met his mom, I asked her, I thought was a very wise question, since Sark was so, not only so good as a trader, but so fun to work with, so inspiring as he's always trying to get better. Sark is saying, oh, I learned that. That'll help me make another 50,000. Oh, if I can learn that, that'll add another 100,000. Oh, if I do this, I can add another 75,000. He's been saying that for the past eight years. And that compounds on each other. So I asked his mom, do you have any more children? Not an Ivy League grad, not a division one athlete, not connected, none of the above the single best growth mindset of any trader that I've trained. One of his big hiccups was in KBIO. He took a $350,000 loss. I actually think it was 400,000. It seems as if as time is going by, he's, he's saying that he only lost 300,000. I think it's 400,000. It was a lot. It was in one after hours, period of hours, after the market closes, the stock the stocks uh, spiked up. He he lost a ton, and this experience made him better. He got better learning imbalances. He learned how to size more in, in particular trades. He got better at his risk management. He understood his edge better. It gave him the drive to work, to get better at imbalances, get better at automated trading, to get better at marketplace. We trade SPY, VIX, UVXY, USO. And, you know, sometimes it's interesting. The relationship of partner to new hire starts from there, always listening to you. And now our relationship is. I pretty much listen to him mostly. I admire him and what he's accomplished and rely on his feedback to help me set the tone for what we need to do better. And so a shark is famous for uh, using two-day VWAP. So VWAP is something that we taught and Shark started using two-day VWAP to make swing trades. And so this is an indicator that you all might play around with if you're swing traders. VWAP is uh, price time shares divided by total shares of the day. 
essentially what's the median price the stock's trading at intraday barometer of the average participants price for the day it's how big banks and funds how their execution traders are judged it's their benchmark so if something is continually below VWAP that means there's a lot more to sell than to buy if something's continually above VWAP that's a very bullish signal so he went away he went ahead and, and used two-day VWAP for his swing trades and one of the stocks that he loved trading was this HMNY looking for a way to get long that stock and you can see right here that uh, in this case on this day HMNY is holding above traditional VWAP and so when we see something consolidate above VWAP, you know, it's, it's, it's almost never trading above VWAP. Look how clean it is. This is VWAP. It's never trading above VWAP. That means there's a buy order. If there wasn't such a strong buy order, we go a little bit below VWAP, a little bit above VWAP, a little bit below VWAP, a little bit above VWAP. That means there's a buyer right above VWAP. There's somebody who cannot risk letting that stock get below VWAP to try and buy it at a better price. This is one of the most effective technical indicators that you can use as an active short-term trader. Is the stock above VWAP or is it below VWAP? If you want to get long a stock, generally you want it holding above VWAP. If you want to get short a stock, generally you want to see it holding below VWAP. And the idea is you buy the base and then you buy the breakout. One tier, two tier, three tier, tier four, tier five, tier six, look for the volume to increase as it's breaking out of the base. Did a video on this uh, over the weekend on my YouTube station, SMB Capital. Uh, did it in great detail, go check it out. And then you can use two-day view up for swings. So the case, Shark wanted to short Google the white line is two-day VWAP. We want to see the stock come up towards that two-day VWAP, not trade above it, hone in on our intraday charts, see the failure, use the two-day VWAP as our stop, and get in here for a short. Comes up towards the two-day VWAP, doesn't even try to trade above it, sign of weakness, a little bit of consolidation below the two-day VWAP, fails, and we're going to trade that to the downside. The very powerful indicator for swing trades, particularly directional swing trades. Resources Mindset by Carol Dweck is a terrific book. Go check it out. And two-day VWAP for your swing trades. Where is the stock trading in relation to your two-day VWAP? The big dog needs help. So this is a anecdote about one of our, one of the bigger traders that we developed. And I think a lot of times people think that great traders just sort of get it. They don't need a lot of help. I've never had to work more with the trader on his psychology than big dog. I've, I had more one-on-one -on -one conversations with him in my back office before he broke out as a trader than anyone I can remember. Than anyone I can remember. And I'm gonna show you really an effective pattern. I mentioned that we have this free webinar that you guys uh, can go to. I teach this pattern uh, as a bonus to that free webinar in step-by-step -step detail. We don't have time to do it today. Um, but you'll get an idea as to what it is. But this is the most powerful intraday setup in terms of a risk-reward. It just offers the best risk-reward of anything that we teach. Something we're looking for every day. You'll see it every day. You'll get an opportunity in the States every day. I'm preparing a, a keynote uh, one day in Singapore and looking for a trade to teach.
thinking about I was thinking about using the big dog trade and I sat down to teach the big dog trade and put together this presentation. Big dog puts up 59,000 in one particular stock in this one trade using this this pattern, his favorite patterns. Got the presentation ready to go and then, you know, the son of a gun, 2 days later same pattern, same stock. He puts up 150,000 in another stock. And I got to do the whole thing all over again with the new stock and the new pattern and the new charts because he made three times as much and people want to see that. So you know, this is uh, this is a strong pattern. And you know, year one, he did okay. Year two, he did okay. Year three, he crushed it. I do think you got to give yourself some time to be a good trader. We don't see people make a ton of money until year three. They, they'll make money in year two. They'll make a little bit of money at the year end of year one if they're if they're particularly good. If you don't make money in year one, I, I don't even think that's the worst thing in the world. One of the you know, but but somebody who, as you can see from the from the P and L, somebody who you know wasn't making seven figures in year one. Took him some time. Eight hundred fifty thousand in seven months. One of the things that that stands out about Big Dog is I go to this eleven o'clock trader development meeting each day and go over the best patterns from the open with our newest guys here and our students. And I'll check his p and l, check his p and l, and then come back sit sit down in my seat around eleven thirty and boom, boom, his p and l would be would have exploded. You, know, you could go from zero to fifty thousand. And again, as I said, we had a lot of sessions talking about his psychology. He swung a little bit, he drew down a little bit, but when he started focusing on what he did best, his big dog trade, he excelled. So the big dog trade, you look for stock and play, news catalyst, look for it holding above EWAP. You look for a tight consolidation. You see the area where you're wrong that you can spot. So you get this news catalyst, either a new product or a growth stock, and you get big. You capture the meat of the move. You don't have to capture the whole thing. And I talk about this, this big dog trade in, in, in more detail in the free webinar, smbu.com slash free webinar. Here's an example trading the stock OPTT, essentially they've got a new product. So what a new product means is yesterday we could make X amount of dollars, today we can make more because we've got something else to sell. You know, trade strategy, you want to look for some checks in your favor that uh, illustrate this trade. Maybe you look for a strong opening drive, a flag pattern, consolidating above yesterday's highs. You want the SPY to, to support you. You want high R vol, relative volume, you know, way above average volume on the day, uptrend in the pre-market. You want a strong looking start to the day. In this particular uh, opportunity, there was a double top on our daily charts. We need to get above that level get above that double top we might have something and then we do we get above that double top so we're clear on our longer term charts we get our vol that's elevated we get a news catalyst in the stock we're above that important double top we've got a pretty good opening drive to start the day stocks holding above the uop and then we get a really powerful pattern we call it a wedge pattern call it the big dog trade. You get extended periods of time where the stock trades in a wedge and is strong for the particular day. You buy the base, you buy the base, you buy the base, you buy the breakouts. You buy the base, you buy the base, you buy the base, you buy the breakouts. The breakouts you want to see at volume come in. Towards the bottom of the brace, base, you want to see volume declining. Volume declining. Buy the breakout sell into the strength. 
And so, and again, we'll teach that in tremendous detail at, at our webinar. But very powerful trade, very powerful technical intraday pattern, very powerful intraday pattern that you can use to make a lot of swing trades. The power of critical feedback. I think, again, a lot of times people think guys are just born great traders. That was not my experience with Big Dog. That has not been my experience here at the desk. You know, we got in his grill. We got, we, we got after him about, hey, this is what you do well. This is what you do well. That is not what you do well. You can't be a trader like Big Dog and take trades that you don't do well because you trade so big that when you're taking these lesser trades, you're going to get killed. So it's extra important for him to focus on what he does well. Do what you do well. Build upon what you do well. If he would draw down 180 grand at the snap of his fingers when he was first developing as a trader and we smoothed all that out. We got him to focus on what he was doing well. We got him to focus on the big dog trade and his, his results smoothed out. And so some of you might be sitting there saying, my results are herky-jerky, they're up and they're down. I had that issue with Big Dog and we sorted that out. Maybe you need to focus on what you do best. Maybe that is a solution for you. So lessons from Big Dog. Go check out our free webinar. We'll explain this trade in detail. You gotta know what your A-plus trades are. You gotta know what your A-plus trades are. What are your best trades? What are the variables for those best trades? How do you find them? Do you measure that you trade them well? You must be aggressive when you see them. Not all trades are the same. You have to put on tremendous risk in your best trades. You must trade it big, like Big Dog. Talent does matter. Resilience is essential, even when you're talented like him. The best need and receive coaching and mentoring. How many professional athletes do you know out there did it all by themselves? On August 24th, 2015, we had our best day as a firm, put up $80 million. And on this day, one of our traders who we're going to talk about next had his breakout day. When he started, he was a failing trader. He moved on to be our head quant in New York. He is a bionic, discretionary, automated trader. We taught him to be a discretionary trader, and that wasn't enough. He was okay as a discretionary trader, he made some money. He was well above average, but he was not thriving and he was so talented. One of the smartest people you'll meet. And we needed to give him more. And I remember the day when I went to meet him for the first time, drove through rain and sleet on this all day trip down to the college where he was the president of the trading club. And I remember thinking <laughs> on the drive back, so the weather was so terrible, man, this better pay off. I mean, it was hours down and hours back and the weather was just torrid. And I remember the call that came in when some of the partners thought it was time to actually let them go. And I remember saying, over my dead body. And I said, let's get him a new coach. Let's find him a trading edge that fits his talents. Let's get him using technology more. And he teamed with a senior guy who was heading downward. And that senior trader taught him what he knew taught him the specific edges that he knew. And this particular trader helped turn around the career of that senior trader where he is now at new highs. And that senior trader helped the trader that we're talking about right now, helped them to become more bionic, helped them to become more automated, 
and that's the way he trades now. He trades off of filters that he's built. He runs automated strategies that he's built off of some of the ideas of a senior trader. And uh, he's, he's, he's an example of finding, finding the right way to express your ideas. It wasn't enough for him to just be a discretionary trader. He needed to do it in different ways. So you know, he, he runs the auto trading uh, shop here in New York. And as I mentioned on August 24th, <clears throat> you know, we had that big day. Best trader in the firm made 15 and a half million. This trader keeps working at it. It's got 12 models on the shelf that he's working on. It's got a bunch of models up and running. He's making money, pushing the buttons himself as a discretionary trader using technology. We say bionic. And he's making money with his automated strategies. He's not doing anything just as a discretionary trader. So look, the lessons from our head quant, you may stink as a discretionary trader and find success with automated trading or with bionic trading. Coaches matter. Leverage technology in this day and age. And so I'll tell the story about one of my favorite traders who's just improved so much. He's not a seven figure trader. It's about halfway there. He's gonna get there. In fact, every time I see him, at some point during the conversation, I remark that he's gonna be the next seven figure trader. So I think he likes. He asks to talk to myself and our floor manager about getting more risk one day. And I remember before this meeting that I was like, oh, really? He really wants more risk. I knew the strategy. I wasn't a big fan of the strategy. <clears throat> I just was dreading him asking for more risk on this particular strategy. And uh, you now he comes in. I'm open-minded. I don't say anything. I'm really glad I didn't say anything. He takes his laptop and dumps it on the table of the conference room. And he shows this gorgeous equity curve for a particular trade for which he wants more risk. It is a 10. And I just think to myself, I'm so glad I didn't say anything until he showed me the data. And our floor manager looked at me and I looked at our floor manager and our floor manager looked at me and we looked at this trader and this trader looked back at us and we said, great idea. Let's give you more risk. And this is an example of, you know, how to shut up your risk manager, but also, are you doing this at home? Do you have the ability to crunch your stats so that you can dump on yourself trading stats? as beautiful as this trader so that you can give yourself more risk. And if not, then maybe you shouldn't give yourself more risk in a particular strategy. Trade bigger only after you have proven success. But if you've had success with the strategy and can prove it statistically, you must trade bigger. So let's have a little bit of fun. And I purposely chose these traders so that we could get to a conclusion. So let's all have a little fun and, and roll out here the million dollar trader trading formula. What does it take to become a million dollar trader? Well, it takes all of this. It takes a growth mindset plus passion plus a really strong foundation in how to trade and how to think through trades plus experiment with different types of trading, experiment with different types of trading with edge, go copy the masters, plus niche, plus trading edge, plus train. Even after you're exposed to trading edge, you gotta work on those patterns. You gotta study them, review them, get better at them. Plus 
trade your A-plus setups big, plus talent, plus bionic, plus patience, takes time to get good, plus perseverance. All of the traders that we discussed above had hiccups. It wasn't a beautiful straight line to success. Even Swang needed help at some point. All that equals a million dollar trader. And look, you can, you can really interchange million dollar trader for consistently profitable trader, but let's have some fun. So if you guys are interested in our daily videos, we uh, send out a, a free video uh, a bunch of times during the week where we're sharing what we're learning on our desk. You can go to smbu.com slash daily video and sign up. You can go to that free webinar that we talked about, smbu.com slash free webinar, where there's three strategies that we'll teach. The number one market lesson that uh, I've learned over the years is you can be better tomorrow than you are today. My second book is The Playbook. That's how I end the playbook. So if you're there, if you're sitting there listening to this, all the way you know, seemingly almost, well, far across the world, in a very different part of the world than, than New York, um, and you're not doing as well as you want, you know, my, my view on that is not that you can't be a good trader, not that you can't be successful, but you're, you're not a good trader yet. Not yet. Not yet. Are you consistently profitable? Not yet. Do you know how to attack markets? Not yet. But there are plenty of examples we've shown today where guys were like you. Not there yet, but redirected and with some with some good focus, got there. So Daniel sent me over some questions, and I'm happy to work through some of these as best I can. And I'm happy to take other questions as well. But let me rip through some of these questions. So. I had a, did an interview with Jason Greystone, and apparently I said the traders are not expected to earn in the first 12 months. Do they have to go through the paid training, trader DNA first? So remember, we have two separate businesses. So we hire traders for our prop desk. We recruit for an entire year. We hire traders for a September class. They tend to be recent college graduates and they get paid and we develop them from, from nothing into the swings and the sharks and the, the rafts and the memos and the Dan G's of the world, you know, from nothing to that. And the first training course that they take before they even show up here at SMB is Trader DNA. That's the first part of their training. And so that's how the traders that are prop desk come in. If traders are not expected to be profitable, what makes you keep them? Well, as long as traders are progressing and as long as traders are doing the work, as long as traders are fitting into our culture, we are gonna keep them. There are metrics that traders are expected to hit. There are standards that are clear to them. If they're not meeting them, we will transition them and we'll help them transition out of the firm, help them get a new job somewhere else, uh, which is a little bit easier than you think. Being a trader, having that on your resume opens up lots of jobs for you. So we'll help them transition out of the firm and, and get a new job. Which attributes should they have in order to be directly hired? Oh, that's a tough question. And again, we, we have this yearly hiring process 
and uh, you go through HR and uh, HR screens you and there's just a multi-layered process and we choose the best people. They stand out. It tends not to be as hard as you'd think. Uh, there are there are people, we're looking for people that remind us of the people that are really good here. Uh, how important and how long should the track record be? So if you are trying to come in as an experienced trader, then you know we'll look at a track record of three months, a six months track record stronger, 12 months is stronger than that. We're gonna wanna see that you're doing the work like which we do. You're doing a playbook trade every day. You're doing a daily report card every day. You are getting your hands dirty with technology. You can program a little bit. You uh, are doing your trade journal every day. You're getting better. You, you have a growth mindset. Those are the things that we're looking for. What are the prerequisites and selection criteria? for being directly hired at SMB. Again, there, there's nothing specific. We're meeting lots of different people and looking for people who fit in, who love trading, who can demonstrate they love trading, who can demonstrate a history of success, who have some ability to code so they can use their technology, who, um, or will learn it. Some of the guys learn it before they show up. I'll learn Python. How many traders are currently working for SMB? So we have 60 traders in New York. We have partners in Austin, Texas. They have about the same amount of traders. And we have partners in Chicago. The, the, our partnership uh, is with CloudQuant. We have a partnership in Texas with Kirshner Trading Group. We use their technology. Uh, and so we're a pretty big firm by now. All right, risk management. When it comes to risk management, which books are most important to you? Great question. The risk management books most important to me would be One Good Trade, the first book that I wrote. Did SMB adopt the philosophy from certain authors, Van Tharp? Does SMB work with famous risk managers like Dr. Steenbarger. So Dr. Steenbarger works with all of our traders and risk management is handled by our floor manager on, on the desk. And so what the floor manager does is sits with all of our traders and they determine together what their intraday stop will be, what their share size, their max share size will be, um, what their monthly stop will be, and they write it out and they both sign it. If you're a senior trader and you feel as if you're in an extraordinary opportunity and you need a little bit more risk, you can ask for more risk. It just has to be asked for ahead of time. You know, so if you are somebody who does pretty well, you can get up to six figures, you, know, you can get up to $100,000 uh, and more in intraday risk. I know we've been trading the stock TLRY, which has gone from 17 to 300. And uh, we thought it would trade lower from 300 down to a well, lower. And, you know, Shark was regularly asking for $150,000 worth of intraday risk because it was a special situation. So we will grant that. And so, yeah, and, and, and we want to think about, we want guys to think about, so you have an intraday stop loss or you have a weekly stop loss. And then inside of that, you want to risk a certain percentage per trade. So as we talked about, you know, let's say you have a $100,000 risk bank per day. And let's say you really liked the IGC opportunity. 
Well, you, you would probably risk a percentage. You would risk a percentage of the 100,000. You wouldn't risk 100,000. If you really love the trade, you could risk 30%. A plus trades, some traders risk 30% of their intraday stop. Most traders have A plus trades, B trades, and feeler trades. A plus trades, most traders will give 30% of their intraday stop. B trades, somewhere between 15 and 20, and feeler trades, 5 to 10%. Their 100% are general guidelines for single trades. So daily routine, how are the daily pre-market sessions structured? So before for each trading session, my partner, Steve Spencer, holds an AM call. You can see him on a video. You can hear him through a mic. And he broadcasts that to our traders and to anyone who wants to listen in. And you know, essentially, you get access to a 20-year market veteran telling you what stocks are most likely to be in play and where to buy them and where to sell them and what he's looking for. If you sit on our desk after Steve's meeting, you then either go into the main conference room where there's a meeting for the newest traders. Our floor manager hosts that meeting. I regularly will attend that meeting. Dr. Steenbarger will attend that meeting when, when he is uh, in-house. And we'll ask our newest guys what they're looking at. When guys are learning, they focus on one trade a week. And so that morning preparation is gonna be for that one particular trade that they're focusing on on that particular week. If you are a junior trader and you've joined the team, after Steve's AM meeting, then there's a team leader meeting. So Shark or K Fitz or Raf, they're gonna hold their AM meeting like Steve. And that team is gonna go over the specific ideas that they're gonna be focusing on. The junior traders will give ideas to the senior traders. The junior traders will have an opportunity to share their ideas with the senior traders. The senior traders will comment. On the trades, the senior traders will tell what they're looking at and the trading reviews. So we review our work in a bunch of different ways. One, traders upload their trades into Trader View where they can get statistics. They make notes and keep a journal inside of Trader View. Two, they send a daily report card to uh, coaches and mentors. What's the one thing they're working on? How'd they do? Also, there are monthly reviews. There are yearly reviews where we set goals. So there are monthly goals, monthly reviews, yearly goals, yearly reviews. Is the trader performance monitored in real time? Absolutely. We see tick by tick what your PL is. We know a, a, a big part of what I do during the day is check in on what all the traders are doing. How can I coach you if I don't see what you're doing very specifically in real time? What if I exceed a stop loss or don't respect the rule? So, you know, I. I that's not good. The way that we view it is we give you permission to trade our capital any way you want, as long as you stay with inside of risk rules. But once you're going outside of risk rules, we view that as an ethical lapse. We did not give you permission to lose $30,001 if your stop loss is 30000 We gave you permission to lose 30000 so we have a problem if you've lost $30,001. We're happy to bump that up, that risk up, if you talk to us beforehand and it's a special situation and you're an experienced trader. Could I be warned during that trade? 
you know, we, we generally want traders to make their own trade decisions. I will watch traders and like, I'm thinking of one trader in particular who I was watching the other day. I just knew he was going to get stopped out. He was too big in the position. And I was thinking I should say something to him and tell him not to trade as big, but I don't want to get in the way. I don't want to get in the way of traders making mistakes. I don't want to get in, I don't want to make trade decisions for traders. They have to make trade decisions. We will, when things are calm, talk about why they were too big. It's a better learn, learning lesson if they've lost too much and they feel bad about it, honestly. I can't be there for all of their trades. Um, so my philosophy, our philosophy is let them make mistakes and then let's learn from them. Do you scan people regularly in order to analyze the performance in real time and so prevent any bigger losses? I mean, again, we're aware of everything as long as people are staying within. And we see that things are not going to work out. But as long as people are staying within their guard, or their guidelines, we're going to let them make mistakes. Uh, are there fixed goals that should be reached daily, monthly? There's progress goals. So, and 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 P and L is dependent upon opportunity. So we want to stay away from P and L goals as best we can. We want to make sure guys are improving. So, you know, even Shark last month, when I provide commentary to him, and when Dr. Steenbarger provides commentary to him. In his daily report card, we're noticing things like you're getting better with sophistication in expressing your edge. We're noticing things like you're better able to handle more risk than you had the previous month. We're noticing things like you are using options more effectively than you had in the past. You are putting on lots of risk in a way that's better hedged than you had in the past. You are doing a more effective job coaching your junior traders. We're, we're, we're talking in that language. Are there fixed goals? Uh, what happens if one doesn't fulfill any of them? If you don't uh, reach the goals that we set for you, you, you are transitioned out of the firm. Again, those, those goals are not de heavily dependent on performance. I mean, look, if you're here for 18 months and you're losing money, I mean, you're gonna be asked to leave before that. Um, but you know, if you're making not as much as you should and you're progressing and you're working hard and you're onto things, that's fine.